Hey there, I'm Isaac from Locofi, and in this video, we are going to be doing a step-by-step -step walkthrough of how you can quickly turn your Adobe XD designs into production-ready front-end code with Locofi. Today, we are going to be building a flight booking website called Flickle Flights. Typically, once you've completed a design like this, you need to hand it over to the developers, and it might take maybe about three to four weeks to convert this to code. And we're talking about responsive, pixel-perfect optimized code. With Locofy, we're going to help you take this from three to four weeks down to about a couple of hours. And I'm going to be showing you how you can do that. Here's how you can easily install the Locofy plugin. First, head over to the Plugins tab, then click on Discover Plugins. You can then search here in this search bar for Locofy. Then simply click on Install. Once you've installed the Locofy plugin from the Adobe XD Marketplace, you can then open the Locofy plugin by clicking on the Plugin tab, then clicking on Locofy. Once you've gone through a quick onboarding process, you'll see the main screen of the Locofy plugin. And I'll show you the main things that you can do. Firstly, we have tagging of layers, and this is the most important feature of Locofy. I'll quickly explain what that is soon. Next, you can also preview, and view your code. Now, let me explain what tagging does. In this design, you can see that we have some elements like buttons, inputs, autocompletes, and more. Tagging helps us to bring this to life. Let me show you what happens if you do not tag. Let's quickly run a preview. The preview will open in a browser window, and you'll notice that before we actually do anything, we have already generated pixel-perfect code. What you see here is actually running on live code right now. However, you can see that when I hover over this, there is nothing happening. And the same thing for this input autocomplete over here. So what tagging does is that it helps you turn these items into actual working components. And I'm going to be showing you how you can easily tag. So in order to tag, first you can select the element on your Adobe XD canvas and then select the appropriate tag for it. We have a button over here, so we can go ahead and select it. And you'll notice that we actually support the most popular UI libraries, such as Material UI, Ant Design, Bootstrap, and Chakra UI. In this case, we're not using any design library, so we can go ahead and click on None. You can also further customize your attributes inside of here in the Properties tab, now let me show you the Styling and Layouts tab. And here's where you can actually define the styles of your button. Define what this button looks like across different screen sizes such as your tablet and mobile screen sizes. As well as define how it looks in its different states. Such as when you click on it, when you hover over it, you can take care of these states as well. For example, for this button, we might want this to be full width on a mobile screen. So what we can do is we can hit into the mobile tab and this corresponds to 650 pixels in size and below. So in this mobile screen, let's convert the width of this button from a fixed 165 pixels to 100%. Great. So we'll show you a quick preview in just a moment. Now I'm going to show you how you can also easily add a hover effect. So we'll come here into the Hover tab, and we're going to just change this fill color to a slightly darker color. Awesome. So now that we have taken care of how this button looks on mobile, as well as how its hover effect looks, let's head over to the actions where we can actually define what happens when you click on this button. For example, you might want to scroll to a different part of the page or change the page. We're going to go with this, and we also have other options available, but let's go with change page for this button. So you can now locate the page you want to go to, which will be this results page over here. So let's go ahead and click on proceed, and that's it. Now we have linked this button to the results page. Let's quickly tag another button here and choose the open pop-up option to open our pop-up that we have designed. And that's how you tag. 
So I'm going to give you a quick preview of what we have done so far. And you'll see now that our button actually acts like a button. So we have our hover effects. And when we resize this browser, you'll see that our button snaps to full width on mobile sizes, just as how we have set it up. Let's scroll down a little bit here to check on our other button. And when we click on it, it opens our pop-up. Now that we've tagged a few buttons, I'll show you another example of tagging. This time we'll go with a UI library elements that we have designed here. This is an autocomplete, so we'll go ahead and tag it as such. And since we have used the material UI design inside of here, I'll show you how we can easily work with it. So go ahead and select material UI, choose the variation that we have used, and now we can go ahead to continue configuring it. You can change things like the color palette. We can enter a couple of options over here that will actually show up when we click inside of the autocomplete. And I'll finish up some other configurations here. And next, I'll show you styling and layouts tab and the actions tab, where we don't actually have to take care of this because it's already predefined inside of the UI library. So let's click done and I'll do a quick preview. Now you'll see that just like our button, this is going to work. We have our options that we have pasted inside and we can interact with it using your keyboard just like this. And the hover effects as well. Everything works just like the actual component would. And you'll see that I have also pre-tagged a couple of items such as this autocomplete, date time picker and so on. Now that we're done with tagging, I'm actually going to highlight a bit more on responsiveness and how you can achieve that with Locofy. Firstly, Locofy automatically detects the Adobe XD constraints in order to help you generate responsive code. Locofy also works as a layer on top of Adobe XD to provide additional configurations so you can handle how elements respond to their parent containers as well as how they should stack on smaller screen sizes. Let's have a look at how this works. We have these two recent search cards on our design, and they are laid out in a stack that is horizontally aligned. On the preview, you'll find that as we resize the screen, the elements are not resizing accordingly. You can take care of this in the Locofy plugin. We'll click into one of these cards and tag it as a container, which contains a couple of these information elements. Then, head to the Styling and Layouts tab. And here you can see that there are a few options. You can set the width to fill container so that it accordingly takes up the available horizontal space in its parent. And we'll do the same for the other card. Now in the preview, you'll find that the cards now resize along with the screen. At a certain point in time, however, this design will still break down and we might want to stack this on top of each other at a smaller screen size. Let's handle this inside of the plugin. Head back to the design where we'll select the parent stack that contains the two cards. Let's tag it as a container accordingly. And in the styling and layouts tab, we can head to a smaller screen width, for example, 1100. And now you can see that we can switch the layout direction for this stack from horizontal to vertical. And that's it. Now I'm going to show you how it looks in the preview. You'll notice now that as I shrink this design, at 1100 width, you can see that these two cards are going to stack vertically instead of horizontally. And this is how Locofy helps you to take care of responsiveness in your design. Awesome. So now that we are done with tagging and we have checked our preview to make sure that all of our components are working correctly, responsiveness is looking great, we can actually sync our designs to the Locofy Builder to do a couple more settings. So click on View Code, 
And inside of here, you can choose the frames that we want to sync. Let's go ahead and sync everything across to the Locofy Builder. Now that it's synced, let's click on View Code. And welcome to the Locofy Builder. It opens inside of your browser and there are three main things which you can do inside of here. Firstly, you can view your code. Secondly, you can create components and add props for dynamic content. Thirdly, you can view and share a live responsive prototype. And of course, finally, we can export our code and I'm going to be showing you and running you through these items really quickly. Firstly, for viewing code, you can see that we have two code panels. On the left, we have the React code, as this is a React project. So we have a .tsx here, and on the right side, we have the CSS. You can also see here that we have code framework settings, which you can tweak in order to meet your team's coding styles. For example, you can switch between TypeScript and JavaScript, decide whether or not you want to use CSS variables, choose your styling such as Tailwind, which we also support, and you can decide on your file naming as well. Once you've set up your code framework settings, the next thing you can do inside of the builder is to actually create components and add props to help you modularize your code as well as allow you to easily populate your design with dynamic data. For example, we have this popular destinations card, which we are reusing a couple of times. So we might want to create a component for it. I'm going to go ahead and click on this. And now that I've selected the elements, I can click on make components and give it a component's name. In this case, destination card is good. So I'll hit create. Now you'll notice that there's a new component called destination card.tsx that has been generated on the fly. So you can see the code for our card as well as the CSS for this. Next, I'll show you how you can add props for dynamic content. For example, for this Paris text, we might want this to be dynamically populated. So let's go ahead and click on Add Value Props. And this Paris over here, let's click on it. And we can generate a prop name. And we'll call this Location and click Save. So you'll see inside of the code that we now have a prop called location added to our destination card. Next, I'll show you how you can also reuse this card component. Simply select the next card, click on make components. And instead of creating a new one, we'll just choose the existing card, destination card. And what you'll notice is that we also automatically generate props for you as we have detected that some items need to be dynamically added. For example, this price changes between the cards, the images as well, and we have generated these props automatically for you. So that's how you can easily create components and add props using Locofy. Next, before we export code, I'm going to be showing you how you can view and share a live responsive prototype. Click on this and we can share our prototype. So you can share it via a link or by sending an email. Let's copy this link and open it in a new browser. As you can see, this is running on code and you can open it on any browser, on your mobile phone and on your desktop. As you can see, it's fully responsive. And you notice that everything we have set up is working just as how we have done it in our Adobe XD plugin. It is pixel perfect. And so this is a live responsive prototype that you can share with your collaborators and team to get user feedback. And you can do all of this and see how your product looks and feels even without writing a single line of code. Once you're happy with your live responsive prototype, we can head back to the Locofy Builder and I'll show you the couple of export options that you have. So firstly, if you just need a quick snippet of code, you can simply click on copy code over here. If you want to actually deploy your file directly to the web, we have a deployment option as well. So for example, this typically works for something simple like websites and landing pages. You can easily deploy directly to Netlify or Vercel using your tokens. 
if you want to export code in order to work further on it, you can click the export button. Here you'll find that you can export screens along with all of its components or just components themselves. Let's go ahead and export everything and we'll choose the download zip file method. You can also choose to push it directly to your GitHub repository. Let's hit export. And that's it. So you can see that we have generated this number of lines of code. And this is something that would take engineers maybe a couple of weeks in order to write. And instead of writing that from scratch, Locofy helps you to generate all of this. We can open this project in Visual Studio Code and then simply run our project. And you'll see now that we have the project running on our local machine. It's fully responsive, just as how we have set it up. And all of our elements are working. Now that you have the code exported, you can continue to add on your logic layer on top of it and populate the contents with data from APIs on your database. We've come to the end of our walkthrough. Thank you so much for following through, and we hope that this has been helpful for you. With Locofy, generating production quality front-end code from your Adobe XD designs can be done quickly and easily. We are looking forward to see what you'll build and launch faster with Locofy.